B7 altered. Uh, A half diminished. Or any of the, the exotic modes, you know, the, the fifth mode or the second mode, or the even the third mode with the E flat augmented major seven. So any any of the modes of C melodic minor could use that melodic pattern, and it's a cool sound, and it's pretty easy to remember once you get the fingerings down. So here's that example 12 in close up. All right, if we turn over on to page 59, um, I only gave you one example in harmonic minor, but it's a real cool one. I, I noticed that if you take that same melodic minor one that I was playing around with, if I simply convert that one to harmonic minor, which means that all my E flats are gonna stay where they are, but all my A's suddenly become A flats. So basically any of these that have an A in them, like this one, the A moves to A flat. The next one stays where it is. Next one stays where it is, no A in there, no A in there, no A in there. And then I get a whole bunch of A's in this next run. This, so this A becomes A flat. This becomes A flat like this. And then finally I'm back where I started. And that's super cool sounding. And so I kind of give you that pattern, but I, this time I'm kicking it down the neck. And of course that could be used for any of the harmonies of C harmonic minor. C minor, D half diminished, G7, the, the kind of obvious ones, but some of the more exotic sounds that can be derived from that would be like A flat major 7 sharp 9. For anyone that's curious, A flat major seven shell voicing, A flat, C, G, and then I'm putting the sharp nine on the B string, which is a B natural. And then I also barred my first finger over to grab a sharp 11 on the top D. And I'm also using this little trick to put the fifth of the chord on the bottom. So I've got an E flat and an A flat both played with my kind of large middle finger here. So here's that one in close up. All right, so finally I'm going to give you a couple of kind of real world examples. I mean, even, you know, those lines that I just showed you could certainly be used in real world settings, but they're kind of, they're still kind of raw material but these are a little closer to being kind of like licks, so to speak, or you know, what, something that I might actually play in a real musical situation. Um, example 14 gives you a single note line, and I'm taking advantage of that quality that we talked about with the melodic minor scale where you have, have that symmetrical nature of those triad shapes, but this time I'm using the open triads. So I'm starting with C melodic minor, which I'm thinking of as the, the sound that I'm using for A half diminished. This is a 2-5-1 in D mi uh, G minor, sorry, A half diminished, D7 altered to G minor 6. And I'm thinking of melodic minor sounds for each one of these. C melodic for A half diminished, uh, D sorry, E flat melodic for the G, D7 altered, and then G melodic minor for the G minor chord. So I'm taking the A half diminished. Again, it's, you know, uh, A half diminished, add second, no fifth, which looks like that. And then C minor with add nine, no fifth, looks like that same shape, but just up a minor third. And then B diminished, this shape, and then up a minor third to D minor flat two. So I get this, kind of, again, kind of symmetrical. And then I'm appreciating them. And now, that was over C melodic minor. For D 
7 altered, I'm using E flat melodic minor, which means my melodic minor scale moved up a minor third, right? C melodic minor moved up to E flat melodic minor. So that means I can take all that same stuff I just played, and then I can just shift that entire little sequence up three frets, or up a minor third, and then arpeggiate those. Sorry. And now it's, I could, from E flat melodic minor to G melodic minor, that's a major third higher, I could just take that same idea and, uh, you know, start. But that would be a little boring because, you know, it starts to sound too predictable. Something like that if I get it right. Um, so I chose to ha put a little different twist on this G melodic minor part. I went to this chord to start with, but then I just went up stepwise. And then to end things out, I actually kind of cheated a little bit. I used a 7th no 3rd chord, G, B flat, and F sharp. It's like a shell voicing, but it keeps that wide interval kind of sound. Okay, so here's that one in close-up. <laughs> 